Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry MO. So we are continuing our dental anatomy sessions. So last session was about mandibular central incisor where we learned few differences between central and lateral incisor. So mandibular lateral incisor, again there are two in number, mesial side uh, we have the mandibular central incisor and on the distal side we have canines and uh, it has a slightly uh, wider dimension mesiodistally uh, compared to the central incisor and it is slightly even larger in all aspects than the central incisor which complement the central incisor in function and the distal contact is with the uh, mandibular canine uh, that is a deciduous mandibular canine until the tooth's exfoliation and then the contact is shared with the permanent canine because it erupts very early that is around uh, 7 to 8 years uh, that time uh, it has contact with the deciduous mandibular canine so mandibular canine uh, the newer one erupts around uh, 11 years maybe 10 to 11 years so once it erupts the contact will be with the permanent mandibular canine so the tooth numbering, uh, the universal system, 1, 8, 9, 16, 17, 24, 25, 32. So it will be 23 and 26. The Zygmunti system is 2 and 2. FTA system is 3, 2 and 4, 2. So the chronology, the first evidence of calcification is three to four months ground completion by four to five years eruption by seven to eight years and root completion by ten years dimension the 9.5 and 14 for crown and root 5.5 and 4 for the mesiodistal at crown and cervix the same on distal side uh, sorry the labio uh, lingual but the buccolingual is 6.5 and 5.8 at crown and cervix and the curvature line is 3 and 2 on mesial and distal side. So the labial aspect, incisal margin, it may slope slightly gingivally towards the distal. So that results in a distal incisal angle that is more rounded than the same angle of central incisor because of this gingival sloping towards distal. And this feature creates a slightly shorter distal margin when compared to the mesial outline. And contact area on the distal is more cervically located than on the mesial. This creating a more cervically located height of contour on distal outline. And both height of contour are still in incisal third. And lingual aspect. The lingual outlines are similar to those of labial aspect. And the structure of lingual surface are similar to their counterparts on the central incisor except cinculum which is more offset to distal you can see it here and as a result curvature of cervical iron is also offset distally and concavity in lingual aspect is slightly more when compared to the mandibular central incisor and mesial marginal ridge is more curvature compared to the distal marginal ridge and regarding the mesial and distal aspect the two surfaces are similar to their counterparts on central incisor with few minor exceptions that is the laterals distal surface is slightly shorter incisor cervically than the mesial surface and both cervical line curvatures are slightly lesser than their counterparts in the central incisor and the mesial cervical line shows greater incisal curvature than the distal and at distal contact area, height of contour is more cervically located than on mesial. In incisal third, the distal contact area is very near to the junction of incisal and middle third and is most cervically located of any mandibular incisor contact. That is the, at incisal third, the distal contact area. Regarding the incisal aspect, the incisal edge is not straight mesiodistally as it is in the central rather it curves towards the lingual in its distal portion and the lingual contour that is the cingulum appears displaced towards the distal so all, all having that distal uh, convergence or distal uh, movement of the crown so these factors give crown 
the appearance of being slightly twisted on its root. So best identifying feature from central incisor though that is the easiest method you can differentiate from central and lateral incisor there is a slight distal twisting. And regarding the root, root length is normally a little greater than in the central incisor and root is also slightly thicker and wider. And the root concavities may be found on the mesial and distal root surfaces. And if present, concavity in distal is usually more pronounced. So anomalies are rare but occasionally a bifurcated root is found with respect to the mandibular lateral incisor. So the difference between uh, mandibular central and lateral incisor we already discussed with the mandibular central incisor. So next uh, we have mandibular premolars because we finished already the mandibular canine session. So I will come up with mandibular premolars. Thank you.